some people say your niche can be your biggest struggle that you've mm-hmm. overcome. So that that could be one thing. And we all, of course, we want to, we are interested in the things that we want to get better with. So for example, when I help entrepreneurs become confident, that is because I had to teach myself more confidence to show up in all the ways we have to show up. podcast biz on the brain with your host me Anne marie and it is all about finding your own true self being unapologetically and authentically yourself in life and business and the podcast centers conversations with other entrepreneurs to really tap into your own way of showing up in a personality heart-based business and leading projects from your soul and infusing your essence into all of the ways you show up online to make it really easy and attract the right kind of clients and also maybe reconnect with your intuition and showcase your values and all of the aspects and in this episode I'm talking to uh, coach and hypnotherapist Gwendy Klisa who has been the niche queen and she still infuses that in her work but she found that there's a lot of mental blocks that show up when you start to specialize or when you start to narrow yourself down because for some people specialization comes naturally and is very much in tune with themselves but for other people especially especially neurodivergent people like myself specializing can feel very limiting and very triggering because we always so get the messaging a lot of times that we are just not enough or too much or you know need to control the way we show up in corporate and communal spaces that are centered around commerce business and entrepreneurship and that's just a lie one of the many lies we tell ourselves that get so deeply ingrained in our brains which is why in the therapy is like a cheat code of sorts for your brain. It's really, really interesting. And so without further ado, I'm going to let Gwendy introduce herself and tell you more about what hypnotherapy is and what people think it is and what it actually is. So we can clear all of those superstitions and stigma and misconceptions. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Gwendy, for being on here and sharing your really cool insight because you help other entrepreneurs really tap into their confidence and you help with hypotherapy, which is really mm-hmm. about kind of reprogramming your brain and breaking mm-hmm. through patterns that are so deeply ingrained that you can get like a cheat code by like really getting in there and just, you know, unlearning it in a at forward way. So tell us mm-hmm. about what you do, how you went there and what you want to mm-hmm. share with the world. Yeah. So I started as a general business coach five years ago. And after a while, I really realized, oh, you need to niche. So I was all about, I was the niche queen. Or I mean, I still am, but that was my selling point. And I was really helping people to position and really find that one thing. But what I really noticed after a while is that Most people that I work with and that I attract, and I'm like that as well, we like a lot of things and we want to do, we have so many different talents, we're good at so many things, and it's very difficult. I felt sometimes that the niching, even though I'm still specializing in it and think it's important, it's a bit like selling cod liver oil. So people are not, not that, (laughs) and it's hard to convince them. And I also often work with people who are kind of blocked and mm-hmm. who maybe procrastinate and they, yeah, they just feel something's holding them back and they've yeah. got everything in place, maybe even the niche, still something's holding them back. And that's where the hypnotherapy comes in, even combined with some cognitive behavioral therapy I've done last year. I wrote a blog and about different ways you could niche. And I wrote as an example, why don't you niche hypnosis? Um, niche, why don't you find the niche of being a business niche coach plus hypnosis. And then I thought, oh, I, I'm, I want to do that. And I've, I've started researching straight away and it's, I'm, I'm just finishing the diploma in the hypnotherapy. So Amazing. getting people the motivation, momentum, confidence, plus the, yeah, the, I guess the business positioning, niche message 
and then I guess rolling into content, but but, but really the business um, side is the niching and the positioning. Yeah. And I find that with niching down, like you said, it's a bit like, you know, selling like a super serum, but not everybody is just specialized. Not everybody has to be specialized because that is the beauty in like diversity, right? You have people who want to see more of a bird's eye perspective, like, like what I do, or you have people who just do one specific thing and then are really good at it. And if they work together, that has such a good synergetic effect because you can use different talents and different ways of looking at the problem from within and from without to complement each other. Other. And so it's really important to know what you're really good at and what you want to put out in the world so people can like see you as an expert in some field, but it can also feel very limiting in the niche. And I think that also ties in with mental blocks when you feel like you have to only showcase certain parts of yourself or you're not worthy enough. So you have to uh, pose as an expert and you have to be good before you can start even. Like a lot of people are not ready to uh, start a business until they actually at, at some level or some people are afraid to charge until they actually have a lot of expertise when we all have something that we can share with other people that is worthwhile because we're like a step ahead of some people and so we can always share something and what is your take on on that on niching being super limiting like how can you use it to your advantage but not use it to just really strip away all of your multi-passionate self yeah so there's there's a few things first of all i've always said your niche is a portal, not a box. So mm. I always welcome my clients and students and people that I speak to to say, see your niche as something, an entryway into your world. You don't need to um, just be in that box. Use it as an entry. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, if you want to offer, offer more of a broad something of everything or like a bit more of a, yeah, broad, you will have still, you will need that, focus point then the personality needs to come out more I would say in that way if you don't solve that specific problem you will have to there will be something that people memorize you by something that they feel oh I remember this this was helping me buy a shoelace or it was this personality so it is it is still a it can't be too broad and general in every respect I guess this is the the main advice I would Mm -hmm. say about about that yeah it has to start out Otherwise, people will browse past. And of course, the bigger somebody gets, the more general they can be. I mean, people like um, Oprah, she can give you a good life guide. People will watch that, buy that and read that. But of course, if I come come with that, it might be right. It doesn't I don't know what she means. Is, this is. Yeah, but she's still specialized in this person who has this open space of conversation and holding space and talking about different life experiences and coaching. She's not known for like carpentry, right? So she has some kind of um, community that she's built based on her personality, but also about her specialty and special skills that she has, right? And I think one thing that a lot of people, there's like this block that is maybe aiding that is just trying to help everybody, trying to feel, I don't know who it could serve. I'm not sure who I'm reaching. Anybody, anybody should just benefit from it. Or I wish anybody would just get it. And then you get so broad because you're afraid of reducing it or trying to help everybody so that you're not helping Mm -hmm. anybody because then nobody knows exactly what is the point that you were helping them with. Because even if you specialize and if you really narrow down your messaging to a specific group of people it doesn't mean that other people can just take you up on it you know but you don't know who the message resonates with until you actually direct it towards a specific set of person personality and background so you would target differently if it's a student and if it's like a working home say say a home single mom um you know they're not mutually exclusive yeah. but there's like different segments are you talking to engineers are you talking to musicians like it's different. So you need to know who you ideally want to help or yes. what part of your business. It could be multiple parts of your business, but they all need to kind of almost visualize a person that you want to address. Exactly. That is exactly right. Because if you don't speak those words and don't speak their language, they will not stop. They will ignore. Yeah, exactly. And do you find in your therapy and also in your coaching that a lot of people kind of talk to their 
like older self, like not older, like their, mm -hmm. their, their beginner mm -hmm. self. Cause I find that yeah. sometimes that the blocks that I'm helping clients yeah. with are actually within me. And I wish I had had that help. So I'm putting it out because again, like I know what I've been talking about. If I'm too far removed from it, I can't really help anymore. So I can't really help students anymore because that's been long gone for me now. So now I can help starting entrepreneurs because that still feels fresh in my mind. Yeah, I do think that we all, some people say your niche can be your biggest struggle that you've mm -hmm. overcome. So that that could be one thing. And we all, of course, we want to, we are interested in the things that we want to get better with. So for example, when I help entrepreneurs become confident, that is because I had to teach myself more confidence to show up in all the ways we have to show up. And so, yes, I think that most people I work with and that I think in this Instagram world or this um, heart-centered entrepreneur world, they do help a previous version of themselves for sure. And they, they want to just have, they have overcome something and then they help others overcome that. Yeah. Yeah. And that is that, good because of course, then you really can empathize with your audience, your ideal clients much better than somebody who's a eBay dropshipper or something. I mean, that's a completely different setup. Yeah. Right. And I think that's so important that you actually talk to humans and show up authentically. That's why I'm not a big fan of these picture perfect gurus who have it all together and who just preach something from their little pedestal because it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel relatable. There's just this little discrepancy. And I see uh, quite a few coaches also do that. This, this kind of authoritarian air where you have to take their word as gospel and you have to implement it. Otherwise it's all your fault that you're not making 15 K a month or whatever. <laughs> and uh, again, this is just a lie when you realize you want to put your perspective on other people without knowing what their ideal setup is in their business, but also their internalized blocks, you know, cause you can yeah. just, I often know what to do, but I just find myself, incapable of doing things and then I have to look at it and I'm like maybe it's a money blog maybe it's a blog of feeling like rejected so I don't want to put myself out there and be vulnerable on social media or uh, mm. maybe I'm just tired and overworked myself and I think it's something else you have to be so mindful of it but sometimes if you if you're having a help of like a coach or a therapist or doing hypnotherapy it's so interesting the things that you uncover sometimes are just um so essential to you and you don't even recognize them in little daily things that trip you up uh that, mm -hmm. that don't even feel connected to this bigger issue which is could be just a simple like simple as if childhood wound uh feeling like never heard right so it could show up in a client meeting it could show up in, yeah, in a grocery definitely. store and you don't even know where it came from it's not easy to understand and you can like, overanalyze it but if you really dig deep and you can do years of like in-person therapy or if you do like a 10-minute therapy session with like hypnosis and so tell us about what is like hypnosis because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it yeah that's right exactly mm -hmm. so most people know hypnosis from the media from movies and there's a whole mind control and it's it's all it's all very you become turn into a robot or you do things you don't want to do that's what people assume or it's sleep or those kind of things and also there has been a movement where the hypnosis is more down to the hypnotherapist who does some magic. And all of that is not true. It, nothing of that is true. It's only um, hypnosis is you're telling yourself something. You're hypnotizing yourself into something that you want to believe. You step into the best version of yourself and you are really hypnotizing yourself to, to, to take that action as well. So that is the hypnosis I do. And it... Yeah, it, it can help people to overcome any obstacles, really, in terms of I'm, I'm stuck. And, of course, the action is also part of the hypnosis then in the end, if you want the results, because just telling yourself things and believing them is very good. It's a great start. But then, of course, you need to implement as well. Exactly. And yeah, that's it. And you, and you will not be able to do things that you don't want to do. And it's also you don't need to you get better at it you can practice it so it's maybe the first session people they don't they feel it doesn't work but in the end everybody who's got just some imagination and who is willing to practice and implement can learn to be a better hypnotic subject that yeah mm -hmm. 
yeah, it's just really being open to it. And uh, mm-hmm. for people who want more like the scientific, scientific approach, there's a thing called neuroplasticity. Like throughout life, yeah. we learn things, we have beliefs and habits that we can train ourselves. And sometimes it's unconscious or sometimes it's been like trained from our childhood environment into us. And sometimes it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't serve you anymore. Or it's a coping mechanism. And you can just try to do you know, affirmations, or you can catch yourself doing it. But sometimes that isn't enough if you don't take the action, or if you just consciously always catch yourself in the moment and try to shift a uh, perspective, shift the thoughts. So if you really get down into your subconscious, when you're like in this kind of um, state, it almost feels like before you fall asleep, that moment before you like fall, um, that's where you kind of put yourself in hypnotherapy. And then you can look at from what I understand you can look at uh, like what is the trigger how does it feel like or what would you wish had happened maybe in that moment like you can show up as Mm -hmm, an adult mm -hmm, self mm -hmm. and uh, lead your inner child and next time you're like you know I got this you don't need to show up when I'm being triggered because I will defend you you don't need to cry or like throw a tantrum or like freeze Mm -hmm. whatever it is and then you can just ingrain the new thought that you consciously want you know like I want to show up more positive I want to have more opportunistic views where I see things as abundant and not as me trying to protect something that I think is lacking in the world right it's just a different mental conscious shift that you then can try to imprint on your subconscious so it's not like manipulative in any way it's just really Mm -hmm. Showing yourself right. love in a way, you know, mm-hmm. because, for sure. It's a big, big thing. Also, what you say is right. The first session will be an assessment. And I wanted to say people have thoughts and beliefs. So in this assessment, I would look at, first of all, just identify one situation. So anybody who's um, listening or watching and who thinks I want to, there's something I, I'm not confident. And then you go, what situation do you want to look at? And then we we look at maybe there's a social gathering where they don't want to speak up and don't give their opinion. And of course, that translates into any communication apprehension. It can be speaking on stage and so on. But you look at that one situation and then from there, you look at your sensations in that situation. How does, how, what am I, what am I? physically feeling and those physical signs if you if you learn to tune into them the next time you will be able to see oh gosh my my heart is starting to beat I might be getting anxious and then you become conscious what thoughts are going through my head because they just flow through the head so quickly that sometimes we don't grasp them but they've already damaged us damaged us in a way that we feel bad we feel sad or we 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 start getting down into that downward spiral so the sensations are really important to intercept and, yeah. and then of course identify the, the the limiting thoughts exactly because it is really the thoughts that kind of make up your reality and that will result in feeling so if I would insult yeah. you in a different language you wouldn't feel it right only because yeah. you attribute some <laughs> meaning to words not yeah. that I will do that. I will not insult you. But I'm just, I know. <laughs> just like, as an extreme example, if someone would just yell at you in a different language, you might pick up on the words or whatever, but it might not actually be something that you take on personally because uh, it might have nothing to do with you. It might you just pass by and someone starts shouting randomly. You're like, well, it's not about me. And then you can you know, notice what it does in your body. Maybe you just feel like you're taking on the world's anger and you're like oh my god I did something I look at them funny or whatever and then that is telling yourself a story and that story will trigger something in your body and when you realize oh my gosh every time I feel like anxious it just feels like I don't know a a gray ball of something over my heart or like when I get Mm -hmm. agitated it feels like this and when I get excited it feels very similar and the more you actually allow yourself Mm -hmm. to feel into it and to like be curious about it instead of pushing it aside or judging it that's like one of the things that people are like feel your feelings like how do you do that if you've been rationalizing it's really hard so just look just analyze your body like a scientist, just like a kid analyzes. Look at my goosebumps. Like if I just like suck on my arm, look at the hickey I make, like stuff like that. Just do it for your emotions, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and that is really cool as part, not just to hypnotherapize yourself, but also like learning these techniques. I think yeah. it's really, really important. Yeah. Cause it is yes. therapy. <laughs> yeah. It's business requires a lot of guts and a lot of showing yeah. up consistently and against the odds and always pushing yourself up again trying new things and some people or most people need a break sometimes from that and it it really of course helps them to have a toolkit to be stronger in that way and more confident 
Exactly. And it's so hard as an entrepreneur to completely separate life and business, because especially if you're passionate, it just bleeds into one another. Your passion like sparked your idea for the business and it feeds your business and creativity cannot just be separated between like nine to five, you know. So mm -hmm. it's really important to know what to your triggers are because they don't care if you're working or if you're not working, they will show up regardless. <laughs> so you need to uh, look at yourself and do some, uh, I don't know, mental flossing so you can be your fuller self in any aspect of your life, be it business or personal relationships or life or just yourself, the relationship to yourself, I think is so often uh, easily forgotten. It's always in relation to other people that you're like, oh no, I could be a better friend or I should be a better worker or should perform better for other people or like be more generous or oh, well, what about yourself? And then self-care people are like, yeah, let's have a bubble bath or like just like go on a shopping trip. But, but is that really it? So, you know, looking at yourself through what you actually need and what you didn't get as a child maybe. And then you know, all ties into the blocks as well. It's like, oh, I love psychology. There's like so much layering yeah. in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is true. Yeah. So how do you feel about people who want to like be braver in their business and show up authentically and vulnerably? Is that a word? More vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, that's a word. <laughs> yeah. But they are a bit afraid to take that step because mm -hmm. a lot of people think it might actually repel people if they show up and maybe start cursing and dying their hair or whatever. But in my opinion, it's mm -hmm. actually the opposite. But what is your take on this? Yeah. I mean, the, the cursing and, and dying their hair is, of course, a thing that anybody, it's easy to do, I think. I think the real scary parts come when you actually share what's going in in on in here and what what are the what are the what's my shadow? Maybe mm. you don't want to share, of course, always only share things you've overcome and things that are not raw anymore. Of course, you don't want to really have really experience. important. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Just say that again. Really. You need to yeah. process your trauma. Same. Don't put it out there because then you're yeah. much they're actually vulnerable yes. in a not good way. Gosh. Of course, of course, yeah. that is the the preamble to that. But if you if you feel it doesn't agitate you anymore, you, it's past. You you've closed it and you have worked through it. Then of course it's of course that is still scary to share. But that is something that will show the real behind the scenes and the real backstage. And of course it needs to be relevant to the business. Um, I wouldn't share any story of my life which is just a bit vulnerable and and weird or scary or interesting of course but if it relates to my business if it shows my values if it inspires others or if it um really shows your usp that is a good one you know mm -hmm. so if i share a story that really points out my um how i've become more confident for example that will help people because i say this is how what i've done and of course hypnotherapy helps or how, why I've niched, why I'm, um, for example, a story about minimalism that I love decluttering, love having everything really simple. And I've got only one thing of each that, of course, really nicely goes into the niche story. Mm -hmm. So that, as an example, so sharing, I think, is, I mean, yeah, firstly, in, on the surface, it's good to show up authentically in terms of your hair and your language and all of that, but then also what the stories, I think everybody needs a few of those. Yeah, and absolutely. what I've also once heard, which I really loved is share your personality, not your personal life. So mm -hmm. that, that, that was really good. And for me, really freeing because I don't want to be every moment. Oh, I'm going shopping. I've got this. I'm eating this. My kids are doing this. So I don't want to do that, but I, yeah. And I don't think that is always necessary as well. Yeah. No, absolutely. And that's the actually one thing that is really easy in content marketing to say everything is content, which is true, but it doesn't mean that you have to share yourself all the time with everybody. Nobody owes, owns your story or you don't owe anybody your story, the same in mm -hmm. business. So I think that it gives yourself a lot of freedom, but also takes away some of the anxiety when you're, you're not ready to share it. Don't. You don't want to just dance in the videos. Don't. You don't want to talk yes. too vulnerably. <laughs> exactly. You just want to get baby steps. Do that. You know, so you need mm -hmm. to experiment with it because that is the beauty of social media and 
finding people who resonate with it and sharing the mm -hmm. stories really, I find connects me with other people who are in the same boat where I, before that found myself feeling isolated and I'm like the only one having this problem. And then you put it out there and suddenly strangers come at, from everywhere yeah. on the internet and tell you, it's me. Thank you for sharing that. I hadn't heard about anybody telling this before and that just reaffirms yourself and that just builds inner trust as well because you can't just build your own trust and your own mental health by yourself because you're always living in relation to other people in a society so you have to be mindful of how you interact with people if they have your support or if you can create something that supports you knowing your needs right and so I guess it goes back to mm -hmm. the hypnotherapy, like mm -hmm. where you discover what it is mm -hmm. that you need and then you can do that. Mm -hmm. Did you actually raised a really good point when you said this built the connection because yes, we share, of course, the reason is to show who we are as a business, show our points, but also then of course, create that connection, that bond, because the people who have a similar story, similar life experience, they will then get great value from your content and your product. So, yeah, that's why we really want to share. Exactly. There's always a point to it, yeah. And so in the end, um, authenticity is just amazing content because a lot of people just find marketing really icky. But if you just don't even see it as marketing, you just show up as yourself, you tell your story, you share your tips and, and tell people, I can help you with it. Uh, like I would have loved help. You know, that, that comes from a hard place that comes from... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, compassion and sharing and being generous instead of just trying to sell you on something that I think you need, but you're not actually ready for it. So I think this yeah. is a shift in mindset. Again, it's it's basically the same thing. You're selling something, but it's it hits different. The intention is different. And mm -hmm. it's a, just a reframe that you can also yeah get from looking at definitely. how your thoughts do. Definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. if you have a certain story and you're audience and your people your community likes you because of that story chances are that you are interested in similar books similar fashion similar ways of everything yeah so all, everything okay. you will offer will will be value to them yeah and that's just generous to share that to make that accessible to other people to not just keep all the secrets to yourself so it's yeah, really an act of kindness you at some rude. point you know <laughs> if you just like heighten it yeah so, oh my gosh, uh, I, I could go on and on about this. I love this so much. So is there any yeah. thought you want to share that we haven't touched upon before we wrap this up? Um, I think what is really important is the daily consistent action. And I, be, and I want to also address this because that's, I, in my community, I, when I say, oh, you should post every day. People don't want to hear that. That is not what they, I've got actually another point as well, which people hate, but this is something, I mean, you, and, or if you can't post every day, post consistently. And yes. I'm saying this as a person who loves to hide and loves to go away from social media and not post for a whole summer because I'm busy and I'm doing stuff. But this habit of just posting every day, and I've done this actually since a few months now, at least I've put on a story on Instagram. I've said every last night in bed at 11.30, I was, I was ready to go to bed. I said, oh, I want to post my story. I had something ready. But, but still, you, you want to have that tick chart where, where you say, I've done this today. Because if you're not consistently there, you're just not portraying yourself as a reliable source. And of course, if you say, oh, I'm taking the summer off because I'm going traveling and then people know that is something that's clear. But yeah, yeah, that and that gives a lot of people so much pain. And then others say, oh, you only need to post four times a week and so on. But these are people that have been grafting for years, building a big business. And then they say, oh, four times is enough. But I know for most people, four times is <gasps> It's so already a lot of work, but there should be easier ways. I think what we spoke before this yeah. conversation, easier ways to create content. But yeah, what do you yeah. think about that? Whole no, topic? absolutely. But everybody needs to define consistency um, within your own parameters. Like, for yeah. instance, I have yeah. like very much fluctuating energy levels like tied to my ADHD. Mm -hmm. So knowing me, knowing what I usually experience, I can schedule out content. I can use the energy burst that I have to create a batch of content and sometimes it's for an entire month and then I just schedule it out or I show up every day and then I 
post it and interact for like, I don't know, two minutes and then I leave it. Or you can also, if you have the budget, outsource it to a VA who really does it consistently every time at the same time. And, you know, if you feel yourself struggling with something, look at it. How can I make this easy on myself? You do not have to do all of the things. Um, if you can ask for help, if you can really trade, um, you know, work with somebody else to support yourself or join the team. You know, there's so many ways to do something. And even if it shows up consistently, you'll have a specific Tuesday thing. Then every Tuesday you post something and then maybe you up it over time. But you mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. a framework that people can expect you to show up in that works yeah. for you sustainably. You know, you, yeah. you maybe you only do weekends and then you go live and you don't have anything prepared. You don't have to do any photos or you just show up in talking head videos, which work beautifully on TikTok and then best you can share on Instagram, right? And then experiment mm -hmm. with it. If you don't want to post all the photos or if you don't want to post all the videos, find an app, find a frequency that works for you and make it work in that way. It's not about listening to somebody telling you how many times you need to post, when time to yeah. post, what type of content. It changes all the time. The algorithm isn't your friend, right? So you need to be your own friend. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you said it well. That's right. Find your own rhythm. Find your yes. own way. Yeah. yeah for me it's really it's the daily because otherwise i just slack yeah well, that's <laughs> good. yeah no if you know that's that is great yeah so yeah, yeah. it's but yeah that's 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 great but also cut yourself some slack by saying okay it doesn't have to be a reel every day okay yes. it can be a story which is actually really simple to do so yeah and uh, t tell me about tiktok are you on tiktok Oh yeah, I'm on TikTok. I haven't been as active since I reached 1K, which was a goal. So I'm a bit confused yeah. about what I'm doing there. Some blog, I mm -hmm. don't know. But I love TikTok because it's the perfect way for my ADHD brain to communicate and consume content. But also it doesn't matter how you show up. Like on Instagram, it's still to some form, it is a bit more curated. It's a bit more in the yes. aesthetic realm. Yeah. And TikTok doesn't care. You can show up messy hair. You can drink a coffee. You can just like run through the room and change scenes all the time. You can just share a two second thingy. And most mm -hmm. importantly, you can just like brain dump. You know, it's just like, I have a thought. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just like work it out. Or you can ask a question. And there's so <laughs> many people who will respond. You've never met them before. And suddenly they're your friends. I have never seen it on any other platform in my nine years. Uh, and it's such a great, the, the algorithm is actually scary. Like it really gets to know you super well, which is how I got my diagnosis. And a lot of people are being really mean about TikTok and like ADHD being like a trend thingy. Uh, it's not, <laughs> this is actually where, cause doctors didn't care. They didn't have the information. And then I had to talk to all of these people and realize, wait, your experience is my experience. And my experience was always dismissed. And looking at all of the official like research, I was like, I am the poster child for ADHD in women. And so I went to the doctor and I was like, so, so give me something. And then she was like, yep, you have it. <laughs> you know, it wasn't easy at all. This is just a shortcut. But mm -hmm. I have had it for 35 years. Nobody noticed but TikTok. TikTok did. It was like, here, do you need to see this? <laughs> I was like, no, I don't. And it kept pushing it on me. And then TikTok knows when I have like a cat face or like when I have this face, you know, it's really, really tailored to you, which is why everybody's for you page is so different. It's so accurate. And if you just need information, it's now becoming a big SEO platform. A lot of more people search for tips on TikTok. If you need like how to videos, people are searching on TikTok. They're not going to YouTube. YouTube doesn't like it, but this is what it, the trend is, right? And so I find it so easy to just show up and find out how you want to show up, what is easy for you so you can be consistent and experiment yeah. without any sort of like constraints. And then you can mm -hmm. actually find community and the social aspect of social media. And it's not just about sharing and selling all the time. You can just talk about your life and then you share a story and then you see what sticks. And if it doesn't mm -hmm. work with your brand, you just uh, don't use the specific hashtag, right? All the hashtags help you categorize your posts so it can be shout out to the specific people. They don't really work as well on other platforms, but on TikTok, it really helps you reach the people if you use specific hashtags. Um, so yeah, so you can try different parts of your business on the same platform without having to mm -hmm. have multiple accounts. So mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. a personality-based approach. If that's what your business is doing, you got to do TikTok, I think. But it, it can be very overwhelming. 
So mm-hmm. <laughs> just mm-hmm. uh, saying that, but I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it too. It's it's kind of scrappy. It feels a bit scrappier yes. than Instagram. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly it's, it's true. Mm-hmm. Love and what I right. also what I also wanted to say, if you if you still want to um, have another topic, yeah, yeah, if you still okay, have so some more time. <laughs> I do, I do have, I have time. Cool. Um, what I what I recently noticed because the hypnotherapy, I'm launching that, and then I'm in this WhatsApp group with other hypnotherapists who are also launching and. Then it's the thing, how do you start your business? How do you get the traction? And for me, it's always, I would put an introductory offer saying, guys, I'm doing a, a, a less a less expensive. I mean, I'm going to be top end, but this will be less and of an investment. And that's how I would start. And they're like, no, never discount. It's just bad if you do four times sales and everybody went like, yeah, yeah, we're never going to discount. But I just, I just want to see the danger of people who are just starting they have no testimonials they have nothing to yeah to 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 back up their 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 new business with and then they're just going in there i don't know if they would do actually high rates but what do you think about that kind of thing it really depends again like you said on your clientele and if you already have a network that knows and trusts you you know like in business terms warm or cold leads and then what are mm-hmm. uh, your marketing focal points like if you just want to do seo if you want to do regional if you want to do more international virtual offers if you want to do social media and all of that you really need to look at what you want from your business what you can like keep up sustainably or outsource Right. And also where your client hangs out. And one thing, especially if you're starting out and a lot of people who are just, you know, very new to business, who don't have the experience, maybe like, you know, I like guess um, like 10 years ago, I would have been there. And then I thought I got the messaging from so many people. You need to offer everything for free so you can get your name out. And then you need to like give discounts or free sessions or trade for work kind of thing. But that is really dangerous because it just shows that you're not valuing your work. Um, you just, it looks like they're taking a gamble on you and then you can never get the exact same value back. So you feel like you're not valuing yourself either. And then you are attracting those people who are looking for freebies who might not actually value the work because I find that the lesser you price yourself just to please everybody, the more tricky your clients will be, the more demanding they will be because mm-hmm. they don't understand the value you're providing, especially if you want to over deliver, you cannot make them happy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it is really just about showing that you put a price tag on it for people to gauge if they're ready to commit because at the end of the day, money is some kind of exchange of energy, um, of time investment, or just mm-hmm. respect of some sort, mm-hmm. right? So you want people that actually value your job. So you need to find the network that is at that price point level. And then, uh, yeah, you can research your competition. But I think, especially in the beginning, you can do also early bird pricing. So you can say it's very I mean. limited. Yeah. That's what I and mean. In in return, I would also like to have your testimonial on yeah, it, yeah. just honestly. Exactly. So exactly. it is basically the same value because they will give you their point of view that you can use to market yourself. It's free content, right? It is their perspective, their face, yeah. their their words, which also is so marketing for yourself and research for you. You can use their words and find a language that your clients converse in. So mm-hmm. it is really valuable for you, especially in the beginning. And then mm-hmm. as you go and grow your business, you will also raise the prices naturally. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Anyway, so in the beginning, it is, uh, you know, valuable to open up your expertise, but you are not seasoned yet. You know, you have a lot of skills and expertise, but you not have, you don't have all of the experience under your belt yet as if you were in five years time. So it makes sense to be a bit lesser price, but make it enticing mm-hmm. with, it doesn't even have to be a discount. It could be an add on. Maybe we do an extra session, like a follow-up session on it, or we can you can give them a workbook or something. You know, if you feel, or just generally, if, if someone feels squeamish about reducing your price, if that doesn't sit right, then look at what um, else you can maybe offer them that could be uh, an add-on. And it doesn't have to be super big, right? You know, like with newsletter signups, it doesn't have to be a whole sequence, a whole book, like... You know, something little, you don't want to overwhelm people. And again, you don't want to look like you're giving everything away for free because that makes people question what you're actually doing, what your integrity is. Um, you know, the energy behind it is really 
sometimes easy to spot where you're like, oh, do they look a little bit desperate. That's maybe not what you want to come across as, but that's how it can look. So if you come at, I want to really generally help people, but I also want to get something out of it because I'm new, um, then asking them for the testimonial maybe is, is a good way to go. Or yeah, offering them an extra session or follow up or yeah, mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. collaborating with somebody else who uh, complements the process. Um, sometimes it's also a good idea, you know, like a webinar, throw it in that, like a re- pre-recording or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's so yeah. many different yeah. ways, but don't just offer yourself for free or like at a price that doesn't sit right with you just because people keep telling you, because they always keep telling me. And uh, for a long time, I believed it. And that really, really hurt my business. And that really made me so hard to get out of that mindset and get in front of the actual people who value what I do. Because yeah. it's such, it just really keeps you down in that low energy where you just don't even see opportunities when they come at mm-hmm. you. Cause it feels uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I don't want anybody to get to that place. Start mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. you are right now. You're valuable as you are. You know, just, mm-hmm. just find mm-hmm. what you can offer to other people. I think the early bird is, a, is always a good one. Yeah. The early bird with the actual price. Yeah. written down as well so yeah. it's not like oh this is actually a very low price always that they already know this is going up exactly and it's also like a little rewards like a little competition like who can be there fastest you know people like that and just like oh my god i'm one of the early adopters like i'm a vanguard like i'm doing something mm-hmm. cool you know that in itself can sometimes feel good for people if mm-hmm. you know you're helping shape a new business or you're trying something new that's it's really enticing to some people and other people just want to sit and see what happens and they will never take the early bird offer. And that is fine too, you know? So yeah. uh, it's yeah. good to, yeah, reach certain set of people if that, yeah, feels mm-hmm. aligned with your business. And early mm-hmm. bird is pretty good. Also, it helps you gauge interest as well, right? It's, it's yeah. also a marketing tool and research tool in itself. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So where can people find you? Um, on Instagram, Gwendy Kleiser at Gwendy Kleiser. It's G-W-E-N-D-I-K-L-I-S-A. Yeah. Yes. I will put the link down below yeah. in the show notes. Yeah. And so do say hi to Gwendy and check her out and say hello. And then maybe book her for a session to really reprogram mm-hmm. your mind to be a better, baddest and bestest self. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Well, okay. thank you for being here. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. I love chatting to you. I love chatting to you too. Well, I wish you a fabulous day and all of the listeners too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in into this podcast episode of Biz on the Brain. I hope you enjoyed this chat as much as I did because it is so good to talk about the brain, which is why I call this podcast that because there's so many things on my brain all the time. And psychology is one of the things that I'm utterly fascinated by. Why do humans do what they do, how they do it, and how is it so difficult for some of us to just change our habits or start new stages in life? And where do we keep the zeal and the zest and the passion when it comes to the nitty gritty and action taking what holds us back? And it is so complex and it's different for everybody else. It's very bespoke in that way. So it's always a fun time to chat about it and just be more mindful. And these conversations always help me with a little bit of enlightening light bulb moments. And I hope they do for you too. So if you like this podcast, let me know on all of the social media channels. You can find them down below. And also say hi to Wendy and... If you want to be on the podcast, by all means, reach out to me and then we can have a chat and see where it goes and maybe talk more about psychology and life and business and whatever floats your boat. So I wish you a fabulous day and hear you back soon.